I've worked in forensic services for a long time so I know how things work and I know how things could perhaps work better and that's been part of my role is to try and develop how we both access services and manage services. So some of the things that I've been concentrating on in the last few years is in looking at access to services, having a single point of access. So there is a way of referring into secure services which can then be looked at and, and signposted to the right services. We've then been looking at the standardised assessment process so that whoever comes to assess a patient uses the same format and everybody recognises that assessment and it can be used for a variety of services. So if a patient's seen and may not be necessarily suitable for the service that's assessing them, that assessment will be used by another service and doesn't necessarily need repeating. So that's trying to get away from the need for multiple assessments of a patient, which is not only time consuming for the services, but actually it's not great for the patients either to have to tell their story time and time again. There's a clear time scale in which the assessment will be completed, the report will be done, and the, pa the patient's case will be taken to panel and discussed. And that brings me on to the panel meetings. Decisions about access to beds is really important. It has a massive implication for patients if they're admitted to secure beds. It may be the best thing that happens to them or it may not be the right decision. But our beds are very limited so it's important that we make sure they're used for the people that really need them and that we have a way of prioritising how we use our beds. We have a single bed stock so that we can ensure the best use of all our beds and to ensure that all the patients that need beds are admitted in as timely a way as we can manage. I've got responsibility for managing our waiting list and prioritising cases and making sure that when a bed's available the person most in need gets into that bed and that's often somebody that's in prison who's perhaps not getting the treatment and care that they require. So another really important part of my role is looking at patients within the system that are stuck for whatever reason. It may be that there are issues with finding the right treatment for them or issues in finding placements for them to move on to. And we've been looking at this through a number of ways. A big piece of work I've been doing is looking at cases with the longest length of stay and we've looked at the top 15% of those cases, looking at ways that we can move them on, that we can help clinicians in finding ways through the system for them, perhaps looking at alternative placements, perhaps looking at other treatment options to try and unblock the system for them, break down any boundaries and ensure that they get the opportunity to move forward as quickly as we can. We also have a meeting called the Clinical Oversight Group where particularly complex cases can be presented and discussed with a whole range of other professionals, trying to share good practice. So what we're trying to do for patients is for them to understand if they're being admitted to secure services, the reasons for that, what they can expect, what kind of treatment goals they're going to have, and what their pathway will be. And part of that is thinking about discharge from the minute of admission, actually planning for what their pathway will be and how long they're likely to stay within the system so that they know what to expect. The prospect is making a difference to patients in secure care. We're thinking about each and every patient, what their pathway will be and how we can best move them through the system.